positive impact on the world by enabling communications through technology. So please welcome Michael Mark here as you're kind of munching away. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, thank you to all you guys, everyone that helped put this together. Obviously, a lot of work. Um, you guys are getting a vibe of what it is that we're trying to create here. Um, the first thing that I wanted to, to uh, give an update on is uh, general purpose progress. So. Everybody here is, you know, kind of has a different background, also a different occupation uh, as well. But I just wanted to kind of give an anecdotal um, update of some progress. Uh, so when I started high school, my dad told me stories about what happened to him when he was in high school. Um, and he was bullied uh, by a guy. This was the time when people went by um, two word monikers. Uh, hard guy Harvey was the guy that that bullied him. And when he talked about being bullied, what he meant was um, actual physical harm. Uh, so this is, you know, people that beat the crap out of you and, you know, things like that. Um, now, obviously, that, that type of stuff still exists today. Uh, but when I looked back at my dad and I told him, like, people don't bully people anymore. And what I meant was like that. What I meant was like that. Um, my own personal experience, um, when I was in high school, you know, I, I was a, always a very creative person. And you know, without functional abilities to create things, then I put that into how I dress and how I look. Um, and societally, you know, uh, it's known by everyone in this room that what we do is we stigmatize people that are different for any way, shape, or form. And so that's something that happened to me, um, albeit I was self-imposed different, uh, where some people don't have that option. They're just naturally born different. Um, and so for me, you know, I remember, uh, you know, in junior high, I was I was in a, a class with some older kids and a kid um, that was like a big guy. Um, he looked across the room. He was a year older than me. And he just mouthed to me. He looked at me, we locked eyes, and he just mouthed to me, I'm going to kill you. And he repeated that. And I was like, what the hell? I don't, I, I like, I played baseball with this kid, you know, a, like maybe five years ago. But what does he have against me? Like, what the hell? Um, and so I had other instances that were like this so that, that, you know, we compare it to what my dad experienced. This was just kind of verbal. Um, I also had, you know, people that because of how I look, they just hate me instantly, which was, you know, I got used to it. Ultimately, I got used to it, which a lot of people that are here, probably if they went through similar things, they got used to it too. Um, so, but it became a common thing. And I started keeping track of the number of people that just walked up to me and then spit in my face. And, you know, that's not something that you want to deal with, but the bigger thing, going back to that concept of progress, is these people didn't kick the crap out of me. That's great. That's, you know, that's the result of a lot of people like you guys working in the school systems and otherwise to, to take that stuff down a notch. Um, so, you know, my dad was in school, you know, maybe 20 years before I was. And then it's since that time, it's been about 15, 20 years since then. Um, and we moved in that, you know, further direction from, you know, overt harm physical harm to, you know, maybe verbal kind of less physical harm. And then now we're into, you know, kind of an era of more digital harm. And although that still sucks, I think we still have to acknowledge that progress has been made across that spectrum. And obviously each one of those has their own nuances that can be worse than the last. But I assure you that because of the work of you guys that will continue to move in that direction, the problems ultimately won't go away, but they'll change form and hopefully for the better. Um, so I want to give an update on that. Now, uh, uh, another kind of personal story for me. So when I was in high school, uh, particularly for this conference uh, regarding um, suicide. So uh, when I was a junior in, in high school, I went away um, to a summer camp and it was at a college. And at the time I had been dating a girl and we had been dating for about three or four years at that point. We started dating really uh, in junior high and we dated all the way through high school. And this was the first time that the two of us were apart by that amount of distance and for that amount of time. Um, cell phones really didn't exist too much. Uh, um, and so this summer camp was at the University of Illinois. So they had some you know, underage kids in college dorms and um, her and I had spent a lot of time on the phone each night. We'd sit there and talk on the phone you know, all night. 
um, much like people would text today. So we did the same thing there. I picked up the corded phone and stretched it onto the, you know, the, the really crappy dorm bed and then just sat there and talked to her. Um, but we kept our door open because that was kind of customary in a college setting. And um, she could hear people talking in the background and she could hear females talking in the background. And they, it wasn't, I wasn't doing anything. She was just hearing, you know, overhearing girls talk in the background. And so her mind really raced, especially with not having, you know, me to take up some of her time. Her mind raced of, you know, what could be going on. And, um, and ultimately, I draw your attention to this fact that in this situation where she wanted to have control, she didn't. And so um, during one of those conversations on the phone, you know, she, it was obvious to me that she was that she was upset and she was sad, uh, but she took it even further um, where uh, one of the times what she did was she said, um, I'm going to go kill myself and then hung up the phone on me. And um, uh, I went just my mind raced with what the hell am I supposed to do? So I'm 17 at the time. Um, what am I supposed to do in this situation? So the obvious answer that most people would say will be, why wouldn't you call the police? Why wouldn't you, you know, these are the obvious answers, uh, but you're not thinking like a teenager um, if you think that that's the answer. Um, and I'll tell you what I thought. I understood that that was an option, but I also understood that um, in the event that she didn't do anything to herself, that the stigma that would come from her parents um, treating her differently or getting the police involved or so on, um, could actually impact her in a negative way that it could ultimately end up the same way as if she had done it anyways. So um, I really didn't know what to do. And uh, I tried the best that I could. And um, uh, I got on the phone and tried to, the best thing I could come up with was try to call somebody that was a good friend of hers that was phys lived physically near where she did. Um, and so I called a friend of mine who called that friend who then sent someone over. Um, and there's a period of time where I have no idea what's going on. And, and during that period of time, you know, that you could say, especially for someone who's 17, this is the worst moment of your life. This person that you care a lot about has just told you that they're going to go kill themselves. Um, so a couple hours later, I got a phone call and uh, uh, it was from her and she was alive. And this was now the best moment of your life. And so this um, emotional roller coaster of worst experience of your life to best experience of your life is, is really challenging as a kid to go go through. Um, and during the time of that summer camp, that was let's say on day four, and it was a two week summer camp. And over the, the, the period of time of the, the remainder of the summer camp, um, she did that three more times. And that was just just horrifying for me. It's just so exhausting, absolutely so exhausting, because obviously you want to take the person seriously, regardless of how many times they've, they've said that they're going to do this such a thing. So anyways, um, you know, I, I share that story just because of, you know, the, the visceralness that I knew of that experience and the complexities that a kid would go through and thinking about how the hell do they handle these situations. Um, so, uh, you know, kind of not to be um, on the on the downer side of things, um, everybody here is you know fully aware that it's tough to be a kid, and and you may have either experienced that firsthand as you guys were growing up, um, or you know you work with people today who it's very obvious that that that's what's going on. Um, so you know the the story that I gave about you know my girlfriend at the time who's still alive, she's married, I think she has a kid, everything worked out. Um, that stuff still goes on today and whether it's done on a corded phone, a cordless phone, text messaging, a social media app, it doesn't matter. It's always going to be there. Uh, but as time progresses and things move into a more digital space, it gives us more opportunities. So you, you just think of like who is supposed to intervene in that situation? Who's supposed to help the kid who is dealing with this or her who is dealing with this? Well, there was no one in between other than, you know, the at and you know, who they don't have the capacity to monitor these things and so on. So as technology continues to get better, it gives us more opportunities. And I, I think that's um, I think that's one of the biggest things. Uh, and one of the things that I wanted to just kind of communicate as uh, with respect to suicide as a general kind of takeaway, um, you know, it, it's a it's a full spectrum. It's a multi step kind of process. But uh, when someone shows some sort of sign uh, of being suicidal, you know, the, the, the two main things, um, 
that we can do, we as people that are trying to help, basically, in, in my personal opinion, they're doing these things, uh, as my girlfriend was, um, either for attention and or they want something to change. And um, that's kind of what I wanted my, my takeaway message to be here, is that when you experience kids that do have some, show some kind of suicidal tendencies or something, just acknowledge that one, they need more attention. Um, and two, they want something to change in their life. And this is their best way that they can figure out of how to do that. So um, keep that in mind. Obviously, a lot of you guys are uh, way more trained than I am in, in dealing with these things. And that's part of the reason why we're having this conference. Uh, so that you, the, the knowledge that you guys know can impart uh, us, the service providers, um, so that we can really make a difference. Thank you.